Prayer. We read 1 John 5, verse 14 to 21. In the last few verses of John's first letter, he reminds his readers once again of what they receive as children of God. The first assurance we have at these, as his children is that we can confidently approach God in prayer. But it's not just that we are allowed to pray, it's also that God hears our prayers. However, there are a few very important things to remember about prayer and answered prayers. Prayer is an intimate conversation with God, not a rhyme recited to keep God happy. It's even less a wish list rattled off about what we want. I've also heard a few times how a minister ends his sermon with his closing prayer, using the prayer to emphasize a few points for the congregation to ensure that they are well understood. Reverend, prayer is a conversation with God, not with your congregation. Prayer is sharing your deepest longing, your pain, your joy, your wonder, your deepest secrets with God. Prayer is also telling God what you think of Him, singing His greatness and power and marveling at His great grace. Prayer is thanking Him for all the rich blessings He pours onto your life and for pulling you, a sinful person, from the pit of destruction and making you his child through his great, great grace. It's being deeply grateful for the Holy Spirit in your life. Sometimes prayer is simply being still and soaking in the presence of God like a thirsty sponge. Not only is prayer a conversation with the Holy God, but it also has a huge bonus. That conversation enriches you spiritually and strengthens your faith. Just experiencing God's holy presence and knowing that He listens to your humble conversation with Him is already a wonderful upliftment of your spirit no matter how heavy your heart may be. The question is whether God ever listens to your prayers and answers them. Am I praying in vain? Am I praying into a vacuum? Sometimes it feels as if I'm praying forever about an issue, but then absolutely nothing happens. Does God ever give us what we ask for? Let's look at our own human circumstances. Your little boy comes to you and asks, Dad, I want a skateboard and a mobile phone with internet, please, and a PlayStation, and Dad, oh, pretty please, Johnny, as a real motorcycle, and I want one too. Please, Dad. What will your reaction be? If you give him everything he asks for, you will do him a huge injustice. He naturally won't see it that way. He won't understand that it's not to his advantage to get something he desperately wants. But you, as a parent, have been through life and you know what will make your child strong for life. In our relationship with God, we also often ask for things we desperately want, but don't get. Just like, like that little boy, we also become sulky or discouraged when we don't get what we ask for and then accuse God 
of not answering prayers. Does God ever answer prayers? I've written thousands of devotionals over the past uh, number of years. An achievement? Well, I have a little secret. If it weren't for God, who hears my prayer every day and places the thoughts in my heart to write, I would never, ever have been able to do it. I have the task of delivering a sermon on Saturdays for a group of Zulu-speaking people. I've also preached on various occasions in small towns in Zululand, such as Ishoe, Shishlui and Matubatuba. However, I have no theological training as a minister, so preparing a sermon is certainly not easy. Often I have to wrestle with a topic. The great miracle, however, is that God never, ever lets me down. Time and time again, I have to watch in amazement as the message takes shape in my thoughts. Each time he answers my prayer and gives me the words to convey to the congregation. Is that not answered prayer? Often God does not answer prayer in the way we want. Why? The answer is found in 1 John 5 verse 14, where it is written that God hears our prayers if we ask for anything according to His will. Sometimes something we ask from God seems very noble and good, but God has something completely different in mind for us. What we ask for may be good, but God knows better. His thoughts are, after all, much, much greater than ours. From my own life experience, I can give an example. I wanted to become a minister and preach the gospel. However, Everything went wrong for me, and I just could never understand it. But then, the Lord gave me this internet ministry instead. The devotionals now regularly reach thousands of people. How many people would have listened to my sermon if I had become a minister? Maybe two or three hundred? Indeed. He answered my prayer, but in a very different way than I wanted, and much, much better. Let's pray. Lord, I praise and thank you deeply for the great privilege of being able to talk to you. Thank you also for hearing my prayers. Amen.